Good. Among the stupid things that quasi-professional health people say is that presses are bad for the shoulders, right? They cause something called impingement, don't they? That's what I hear. That's what you hear. It's what everybody hears. The problem is, is that's physically, anatomically impossible. It's another example of the conventional wisdom being 180 degrees, the opposite of what actually is the case. And here's why. This is the scapula, okay? Lateral aspect, medial aspect. This is the posterior. This is the anterior. And if I lay this scapula on Brett, here it is, okay? Now, raise your arm up into a press and look what the scapula does. Go. It rotates, doesn't it? The scapula moves. It's not nailed down to the ribs. In fact, in humans, the scapula is actually attached to the rest of the skeleton only at the clavicle. In many animals, it's not attached at all. Like your dog does not have an attached scapula. It just floats. One of the things about this floating is that it can accommodate many, many different positions. Here, this little cup right here is where the head of the humerus rests. This is the socket of the ball and socket joint. And if you'll notice, there are two little bony protuberances right over the top. This is the acromion process. This is the coracoid process. And they make a little shelf over which the head of the humerus rests inside this structure. Now, if this happened, that would be impingement. You would squish the structures that lie between the head of the humerus and this arch of bone over the top. Those structures are the rotator cuff tendons, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons, and there's a little bursa up in here as well. Okay? You would mash those. But look what happens in a press. Here we are. Note that the scapula starts off in this position, and as Brett presses up, the scapula rotates up. Now, shrug. You see the scapula move up? It finishes an internal, medial, superior rotation, thus pulling, look at this, it pulls these bony landmarks away from the head of the humerus, so that when you finish a, a a press with a shrug and point your scapula in this direction. These two bony knobs are pulled away from the head of the humerus. It cannot impinge. Now let me show you what impingement actually feels like. Hold your arms here in 90 degrees of abduction with your arms in internal rotation. Now, without shrugging the shoulders, just lift the elbows. Feel that? Mm -hmm. That's shoulder impingement. Does that look like a press or a bench press? No. Bench press has the potential to do that. That's why we bench down here. Okay. Okay, to unimpinge. But now, from this position of impingement, externally rotate and shrug on up. Now, shrug, you feel that at all? Yeah. That's because the press at the top, because of the shrug, does not impinge the shoulder joint. It cannot impinge the shoulder joint. It is anatomically impossible to impinge the shoulder joint in that proper shrug position at the top of the press. Also, if you will look at the anatomy of the scapula, this bony ridge is the spine of the scapula. This position is where the trap fibers, the fibers of the trapezius, attach. Okay, So in this position at the top of the press, Traps are attached here. Arm bone, humerus, comes out of here vertically. Forearms on top of that, bars on top of that. Traps are attached here. So, traps support the scapula in the press, and therefore the traps hold up the bar in the scapula. And when we tell you to shrug at the top of the press, we are just reinforcing the function, the anatomical function of the trap at the top of the press. And that's why you shrug. That's why you shrug. You unimpinge when you shrug, and you support the barbell when you shrug. So always finish the press with a shrug. Okay.